Physicist Robert Oppenheimer, upon witnessing the first successful test of an atomic bomb, recalled, a few people laughed, a few people cried, most were silent. He then remarked, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This would be the first of over a thousand nuclear tests conducted by the United States, an event that would forever change the world. In the center of Las Vegas, the National Atomic Testing Museum stands as a reminder that the atomic bomb is as much a part of Vegas history and identity as neon lights and showgirls. Hey, Michael, what a pleasure. Nice to meet you. How old is the museum and who made sure that it got here? We're starting in our 13th year, and it was really founded by a lot of veterans of the test site who worked out there for many years and wanted to tell the important historical story. The relics of the museum are from a time not that long ago, but some of them seem like they're from an entirely different world. The atomic bomb was the tipping point of a new era for mankind, and here you can see all the way back to its origins. Let's go back to the beginning. How did this whole thing begin? Was it with Albert Einstein? He was the one that wrote the famous letter to President Roosevelt warning that uh, Nazi Germany could be on a road of a developing atomic weapon. So that's what really spurred the Manhattan Project, our project during World War II to develop, to, to build an atomic weapon. The Manhattan Project was the combined efforts of legendary geniuses such as Einstein, Oppenheimer, and Enrico Fermi, scientists from across the world working with the US and British governments to defeat the Axis powers. Their first bomb would be completed in Los Alamos, New Mexico in 1945. In 1951, we kind of got back into nuclear testing in high gear because the Cold War was really heating up. Russia tested their first bomb in 1949, and that upset everybody. And we needed a place here stateside that was actually close to New Mexico, and in 1951, the Nevada test site opened up. And what exactly were they testing out there, and how were they doing it? Well, from 1951 to 1963, they did 100 above-ground tests, mainly of atomic weapons, something on the scale of what we think of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, in the order of a kiloton to about uh, 50 kilotons. From the instant of that first blast until Hiroshima vanished from the list of living cities, closely guarded plants in New Mexico, Tennessee, and the state of Washington continued their work to shorten the war. 50 kilotons is a big bomb, but nothing like what we would later develop. Eventually, the fission technology gave way to fusion, and thermonuclear devices with nearly limitless potential were created. Following World War II, Americans associated the atomic bomb with civil defense and security, a culture formed that admired their terrible, awe-inspiring beauty. It had to affect, somehow, the city of Las Vegas at the time. How did it do that? Well, you know, to me, that's the most interesting story. I mean, we talk a lot about the bombs and the test, but to me, the, the biggest story is the legacy that over the years, so many jobs were brought to this area by the testing at the test site. Over 200,000 people came to this community over a 30, 40 year period and settled here. And it literally brought Las Vegas from a population of 33,000 to almost 2 million in the Valley today. This really infected the public consciousness with pop culture, didn't it? It really came alive. It eventually led to that in the heyday of the uh, early 1950s. I mean, everything was atomic this and atomic that, and it was really, it became part of our national identity in a big way. The atomic age was here. Tests were advertised in advance to promote tourism. A Miss Atomic Bomb was crowned, and atomic cocktails were toasted across town. Atomic Energy was going to defend America, power its homes and cars, and take us to new worlds. So then things began to turn a little bit. We began to see these films of houses being just blown away and, and mannequins being destroyed. And I think a certain fear began to set in as to what this could really be. Gradually, uh, atomic weapons became less popular. You're absolutely right. And that was another one of the tests they did out at the test site was to do tests on wooden structures, concrete structures, you know, military hardware to see what would actually happen if a nuclear war came, how these things would survive it. And that all led to the Limited Test Ban Treaty of 1963. And I think it's a very remarkable thing that we have President John F. Kennedy and Premier Khrushchev that faced one another just a year before in the Cold War. Now they were trying to come together and put through a treaty that forced testing underground to make it safer and to eliminate the fallout of nuclear waste. 
Amid growing concerns of fallout from the Nevada test site reaching Utah and Arizona, all testing moved underground. This newly required technology has not been duplicated or topped to this day. Let's talk about actual size. How big are these bombs? How big were they? How big are they today? Well, the, the bomb we dropped on, you know, um, Hiroshima or Nagasaki were about the size of a, a large car, a small bus. Uh, that was a problem because when we developed rocket technology that also came out of World War II, they wanted to eventually, eventually marry an atomic weapon to the head of a missile. And it had to be much, much smaller to do that. That was the reason for a lot of the initial atomic testing, to make the physical size of the device smaller. Started out about the size of a small car or a bus, and today, how small are these weapons? You can get the, the nuclear core as small as a tennis ball today. That's, that's, that's frightening. This is an incredible piece of technology that we're looking at here. Tell me about it. This is called a rack or canister. <clears throat> and in the days of underground testing, most of the testing was done in deep vertical shafts. When you go to test the device, you just don't throw the bomb in the bottom of the hole, you lower it on a canister because the whole point of nuclear testing is to get good diagnostic information back. An incredibly complicated, precise process because the hole had to be perfect. Had to be dug perfectly straight because there wasn't a lot of clearance between the side of the rack and the side of the hole. And at that point, nobody had ever drilled a hole that big, had they? That's right, a whole new drilling technology had to be developed at the test site. And again, it brought even more workers and craftsmen into, into this region. The Nevada test site performed 824 underground tests with only a single incident of leaking. While much was learned, the fear of fallout and the looming threat of mutually assured destruction eventually brought nuclear testing to a close across most of the globe. Okay, it's official. Whether you're interested in science or culture or history or even ethics, the Atomic Testing Museum is an absolute must. But now, I'm gonna take it to another level, going to the site itself.